New Western intelligence suggests that Russia maintains an extensive air defense network, but this has not stopped Ukraine from carrying out long-range drone strikes. As Business Insider reports, Ukrainian drones have carried out a series of attacks on important Russian ammunition depots in recent weeks, causing significant damage and destroying large quantities of weapons needed to support the Russian military. The strikes demonstrate the success of Ukraine's long-range drone programs and call into question the ability of Russia's air defenses to effectively protect its assets. The UK Ministry of Defense said Kyiv's ability to quickly launch major attacks highlights Russia's difficulties in countering Ukrainian drones despite its extensive air defense network, including surface-to-air missiles, electronic warfare, anti-aircraft guns and fighter jets. The Ukrainian side said its drones are able to bypass Russian defenses and strike an ammunition depot in the Volgograd region, which was another attack on Russian facilities. According to British intelligence, such attacks are likely to further disperse Russia's logistics system due to fears of further strikes, making it even more difficult to supply the military. Analysts at the Institute for the Study of War also point out that regular attacks on Russian warehouses could force Moscow to disperse its material to reduce its vulnerability. Despite all efforts, Russia has been unable to effectively repel Ukrainian drone attacks at significant distances since the beginning of the war. In recent months, Ukraine has successfully attacked important military and energy targets in Russia using domestically produced drones because it is prohibited from using Western missiles to strike Russian territory. Kyiv continues to insist that these restrictions be lifted, believing that doing so would further undermine Russia's military capabilities. Recently, Ukrainian drones detonated 2,000 tons of ammunition in southern Russia. The explosions at the warehouses caused local earthquakes and were also visible from space. Successive raids on ammunition depots signal a shift in Ukraine's deep strikes campaign against strategic targets inside Russia. For months, Kyiv has been asking its European and American allies for permission to strike Russia with British Storm Shadow, French Scalp, EG and American missiles, but has been repeatedly refused. Apparently running out of patience, the Ukrainians have doubled down on their production of homegrown weapons, drones and missiles that they can fire at targets inside Russia without asking anyone's permission first. The last attacks also signal an increase in the scale of Ukraine's deep strikes. Previous raids, some of which hit targets up to 1,800 kilometers inside Russia, were impressive in terms of logistics but small in scale. The Forbes notes. The Russians demonstrated training to intercept Ukrainian sea drones using FPV drones launched from an Mi-8 helicopter. This was noted by the publication Defense Express. The helicopter contains a crew of FPV drones and the UAV itself is launched from the open door of the helicopter. After that, the operator makes a decision to attack the target. Although this solution seems rather simple, it represents a new approach to using FPV drones. In fact, this approach neutralizes the threat that anti-aircraft drones can pose to the helicopter. Let us recall that back in the spring, the Russians published a video in which you can see a Russian helicopter firing at one of the Ukrainian anti-aircraft drones. It shows a short-range air-to-air missile. As the Russian side noted at the time, the drone managed to launch a missile towards the Mi-8 helicopter, but it missed. The FPV drone's flight range significantly exceeds the R-73's launch range from zero altitude. The latter is about 12 kilometers, while the FPV drone's range can reach 20 to 30 kilometers. It should be noted that the Russians have also begun producing their own sea drones. Thus, recently, it was reported about the serial production of a heavy sea drone, which was named Vizier. Its length is 7 meters and its width is 2.5 meters. The drone can reach speeds of up to 45 kilometers an hour and its range reaches about 500 kilometers. Earlier, the Russian Federation presented the Morena 300S unmanned boat, which received a warhead weighing 500 kilograms. It is reported to have a range of up to 500 kilometers and a speed of up to 45 knots. The warhead weighs 500 kilograms. The developers do not disclose other important parameters. The available data suggests that the Russians created this drone for coastal operations. 
The reliability of the design is a big question for experts, in particular the trailer motor, which is more reminiscent of similar products of the Yemeni Houthis. Overall, the low build quality of the Morena 300S is striking. Perhaps this is due to the fact that it was created in a short time. The boat's appearance can even be confused with the bizarre products of Latin American drug cartels. Among the most interesting solutions is an element similar to the dish from Starlink. Perhaps this is a receiver of another system, stylized as a system from SpaceX. Russian specialists will carefully study the design of the German tank Leopard 2. The captured vehicle was delivered to Ural Wagenzavod for a thorough examination. This was reported by the corporation's press service. A German Leopard 2A6, taken as a trophy in one of the areas of the Special Operations Zone, was delivered to Ural Wagenzavod, where Russian specialists will work on it. This tank is in a very normal condition. Apparently, it was abandoned by the crew due to some kind of breakdown and was not hit. In any case, it is now in Nizhny Tagil. As reported by Ural Wagenzavod, the German delivered to the plant has already been put on jacks and disassembly has begun. Based on the results of studying the tank's design, an expert assessment will be issued as well as recommendations for the military. No time frame has been announced. Specialists from the Ural Wagenzavod concern have begun to dissect the Leopard's units, systems and assemblies. After conducting research and analyzing the results, an expert assessment will be given of the actual military technical level of the various systems and the captured vehicle as a whole, the press service of Ural Wagenzavod said in a statement. As noted, this is the first German tank that fell into our hands in almost working order. Before that, all captured vehicles arrived with various damages. It seems that soon, Ural Wagenzavod specialists will get both the American Abrams and the British Challenger too. At the start of the full-scale invasion, Russia was estimated to have around 3,300 operational tanks, suggesting that all those that initially drove into Ukraine and then some have been taken out over the course of two and a half years. It's impossible to know for certain exactly how many tanks Russia has lost during the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, so any figures need to be treated as estimates. An assessment for British Defense Intelligence earlier this year said Russia had likely lost 2,600 tanks since the start of the full-scale invasion and 4,900 IFVs, a total of 7,500. Figures from the open-source investigative project Oryx put the number of tanks damaged or destroyed at 3,180. As Oryx only publishes visually confirmed data taken from open sources, the real numbers of Russian losses are likely significantly higher.